Hello, this is Dr. Richard Herman on behalf of Real World Endo. I'm a diplomat of the American Board of Endodontics, and I'd like to give a presentation today on ultrasonics. So over the past 25 years, the advancement in technology and techniques in endodontics has been phenomenal. From the introduction of the surgical operating microscope, nickel titanium instrumentation, MTA, bioceramics, and CBCT, just to name a few, has been incredible. Today, I would like to talk about ultrasonics. This is an a, instrument that I think is indispensable in clinical endodontics. I would like to start with the presentation with a short introduction of ultrasonics and then go over the many uses of ultrasonics in endodontics. So, when we talk about ultrasonics, we're talking about two methods of producing ultrasound. One, magnetic restriction, which converts electromagnetic energy into mechanical energy, and magnetic metal strips vibrate in the electrical field. We also have piezoelectrical, a crystal changes dimension when the electrical charge is applied, which is the form crystal converted into mechanical oscillation. This was shown by Wamsley in 1987. So which system do we use? The piezoelectric unit has many advantages. One, it gen generates little heat, no cooling needed. That's not totally true because we do use cooling. Transfers more energy to the file, more powerful, and that was shown by Ahmad in 1992. It works by more cycles per second as versus the magnetic restrictor principle, 40 uh, cycles per second versus 24 cycles per second. The tips work in a linear back and forth piston-like motion, that's the piezoelectric principle, as versus the magnetic restrictive units which to create a figure eight elliptical motion which is used in the cavitron. We can't use figure eight because that would destroy two structure. So we work with piezoelectrical principle. There's ultrasonic physical effects as well. In a fluid with free ultrasonic vibrations, there's a significant physical uh, effects observed. Cavitation and acoustic streaming. In cavitation, there's fluid's tensile strength, which is exceeded, hydrodynamic method, alternating pressure fields via piston pump, and there's a cavity formed in the fluid, and that's a negative phase. Then we go to the positive phase, and that's a rapid positive phase where the cavity implodes. Vapor-filled bubbles collapse and irrigant penetrates. Under normal conditions, the power of the ultrasonic unit that we use is too low to create significant cavitation effect on the dentinal walls. And this was shown by Ahmed in 1990. So we're involved with the principle of acoustic streaming. It's rapid movement of particles of fluid in a vortex-like motion about a vibrating object. It creates small, intense circular fluid movement. There's an eddy flow created, apically directed flow, and the energy from the file transmitted to the irrigant, the irrigant transfers energy to the dental walls. And we involved with this when we do irrigation, which we're gonna talk about. Endodontic use of ultrasonics and endodontics. One, refine access, refine calcified canals and remove pulp stones. Number two, removal of intracanal obstructions. Three, increased action of irrigation solutions. Four, removal of posts. Five, removal of separated instruments. And six, surgical endodontics. So these are the six situations that we are able to use ultrasonics in endodontics. When we talk about access, this has been a revolution because there has many advantages to ultrasonics. One, there's less treatment time. Number two, more safety. Three, certainly better visual access. And four, it's much easier to locate MB2s. So here are some tips that we use. There are many ultrasonic units on the market and they're all very good. So we use basically five tips. One, we use tips shown on the top, use tips for troughing. And they're usually what we call 9D, 9, 14D, 14, or 15D. In the initial phase of removing interferences where there's secondary dentin, we use bigger tips. And the diamonds have better cutting efficiency and better control. Finding canal offices, we use thinner, longer tips, which are shown in E, work deeper, enhance visibility. So key concepts to remember are one, diamond coated have better cutting efficiency versus stainless steel, was iconium nitrite coated tips. Diamond coated tips, more prone to break, so we gotta be very careful. Less smear layer removed if we're using the stainless steel tips. Thinner tips transmit ultrasonic waves 
much more efficiently, more aggressive. And that was shown by Izakawa in 2003. And we have to be care of the power settings, which we're going to talk about. So locating canals, okay? So in the past, we had a contra-angle. We're gaining axis. We get into the axis cavity, and we're looking for our canals. And we have slow-speed contra-angle head. And you can see the head obstructs the view of the chamber. So now we're able to see right into the chamber using ultrasonics. So here's a, a slide that shows us Forza V3, which is a brass unit. I think it's very, very good. It's the one we use. But again, all the instruments, all the ultrasonic instruments on the market do basically the same thing. It doesn't really matter. The one main advantage that the brass unit has, the Forza V3, is it has an LED light, which gives us enhanced illumination. So even though many times we're using a surgical operate, operating microscope and we're using the ultrasonics, we like as much light as possible. And I kind of like to use the term light hungry. The more light, the better. So here's a picture. I'm just showing you how beautiful it looks without using a routine contract. This is the ultrasonic unit, the Forza V3. It's very well done ergonomically, easy to use. You can uh, take it from operatory to operatory with no problem. Most endodontists have every one in each operatory, I'm sure. We have one in an ASI cart, which is right at our side. We use it on every single patient. So here's a video I'm going to show you that was produced by Dr. Ali Nassay, who's the chief operating officer of Real World Endo. He's an amazing endodontist. And I'm just going to show you a situation of removing a post. So in the past, there were many times I would like to take the crown off because we didn't have ultrasonics and the only way to remove the post was with the burrs. So here we have a routine axial cavity. Ali's showing you what, we do, what he's doing. He's uh, taking an ultrasonic tip, going counterclockwise and clockwise until he breaks the bond between the, uh, the post and the dentin. He's trying to break up the cement, the cement that's in the, in the, in the canal. And that's what he's doing. You can see the instrument starting to move now. Most of these don't take long. And we can almost get out just about almost every post. So you can see what he's doing. He's uh, troughing around the post. And the post is going to come out very easily. So sometimes this can take 5, 10 minutes. Sometimes it can take 15, 20 minutes. So again, he's just troughing around. You can see the post coming out. And you're going to see the post pop out in a second. There it is. So now that allows him to go ahead and continue to do his retreatment of the, uh, of the uh, involved tooth. Does not have to remove the crown. Doesn't have to alter the axis preparation. And it works beautifully. So now Ali's going to show you that he's taking out the, um, the gutta percha, and then he's going to instrument it, and then reobturate it. So it's a great advantage of, end of, of ultrasonics, just terrific. So this particular tooth has a sinus tract, as you can see. You can, no problem. That's the retreatment radiograph, immediately post-op. And then it'll show you a, a picture where the sinus tract is completely healed one month later, and everything is great. Crown is totally intact, didn't have to do anything. And it's basically almost a routine retreatment. Just to show you another case, this is a tooth that has a post in it. Obviously, the root canal therapy is horrible, but that tooth might have been scheduled for an extraction. But again, we don't have to remove the prosthesis, remove the post, retreat the tooth, and we get a great result. That's with the aid of a surgical operating microscope and ultrasonics. So number two, we can remove intracanal obstructions, such as hard paste, silver points, broken files, instruments, and posts. Ultrasonic energy is an effective adjunct. Endodontic files can go deep within the canal, no problem. So removing posts, 
The goal is to remove the post with minimum loss of remaining two structure. So in the past, before we had ultrasonics, it was very difficult to remove the post without hurting or destroying two structure. I'm showing you a, a picture of radex fiber posts and fiber posts have become very, very favorable in, uh, in restoring endonotically treated tooth. So fiber posts become removal is a new challenge. The disruption of composite structure through ultrasonic energy seems to be the most effective means of removal. So there's all kinds of fiber posts. We at Brasla have fiber posts that match our shape of a canal and you can fit them in perfectly. Suffice it to say that it's a fiber post. Broken file removal is another advantage of ultrasonics. The ultrasonic tip is placed on a staging platform. We locate, if we can, where this separated instrument is. We make a platform on top of the fractured instrument and then we ultrasonic vibrate around the file counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on the nature of the, of the uh, file. We like to cover the orifices that's so that if we get the file out, it jump, doesn't jump into another canal. So we cover the orifices and that's, that would help many times. So let's review what we talked so far. Ultrasonics are helpful aid in removing intracanal obstacles, such as posts, files, and paste. Optimum visibility is not only a possibility, it's a reality. Heat is a concern to PDL. Now that could be a problem. You have to be very judicious how you use the ultrasonics because the ultrasonics does generate some heat. So I like to use a, uh, a cooling medium, water, and it doesn't present a problem. You just have to go very slow and not be over anxious. Care should be applied to remove the silver cone because if you don't want the silver cone to fracture, so you have to be very careful. When we come to irrigation, that's a big thing in endodontics today. Irrigation has gone from passive irrigation to hydrodynamic irrigation, and we like to use ultrasonics. So there's irrigation effectiveness, effectiveness relies on two ways, mechanical flushing of the action, chemical airability of the irrigants. Movement of the irrigant, only way to clean webs and fins. As I showed you before, the principle is done by acoustic streaming. Increased action of irrigation solutions. Fluxing action is enhanced with ultrasonics. Why? Because we have a higher velocity, we have a greater volume of ir irrigant flow, and we're able to get into all the lateral and accessory canals, webs, fins, anastomosis. And now with nickel titanium instrumentation, we get great, great shaping of the canals. The literature shows us that if we can get to uh, at least a 3004 and then use our irrigation protocol, we can really clean the canals like we never did before. Ultrasonic power agitates the fluid violently. It releases pieces of tissue from confinement and ruptures the tissues, thus causing rapid dispersion and dissolution. Increased action of irrigation solutions. A few key thoughts. The file, the ultrasonic tip, must be unbound within the canal. That's unbelievable. When we use the irrigation protocol, we use it, it says 30 seconds to a minute. I like to use it for a minute. When we're all done with our instrumentation, we use the ultrasonic unit. They use low to medium power. I like to favor more closer to the lower power. And we use a cooling medium. And so we reduce the chance of fracture of the ultrasonic point. So let's review again. Ultronics aid in moving irrigant to the fins and webs. Acoustic streaming effect is significant. Ultrasonics and sodium hypochloride has a synergistic effect, whereas ultrasonics and just EDTA has a minimal effect. The file design does not affect the flushing ability. Okay, so the last thing about ultrasonics is surgical endodontics. This has been amazing because the literature shows us prior to ultrasonics and material science, we were only getting 59 to 70% success when we were doing surgery. Now, the literature shows us we're getting better than 93%. So the ultrasonic use in surgical endodontics can be divided into two main areas, root and cavity preparation and placement of root and obturation materials. Why not use standard burrs like we used to? It's hard to cut parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The burrs may sacrifice tooth structure, especially at a 45 degree angle to aid visualization. It's hard to access the apex. We have a risk of perforation, especially lingually. And the longer bevel cut due to lack of proper prep design leaves us with accessory lateral canals exposed in the apical three to four millimeters. Dental tubules are more exposed as well. So here are some of the ultrasonic tips. There are stainless steel and they're diamond coated and we, we can use both. They're used for anterior teeth with no problem, maxillary mandibular, 
and the points are just great points to use. So in 1998, there was an article that came out by Lynn, ultrasonic retro tip advantages, deeper, more conservative preparation of the cavity, follow the original path of the canal much better, less risk of lateral perforation, and removal of tissue between isthmuses between the canals. So this is a big factor because if, in the past, if we take a, let's say, uh, a maxillary first premolar or a lower mandibular molar, and we locate two canals, there's an isthmus that connects the two canals. In the past, we weren't taking away or addressing the isthmuses. Now with the ultrasonic unit, we can, and we can put our MTA or bioceramics into that area and get success. So the ultrasonic steps, okay, medium power, Cavity prepared to a depth of three to millimeters. That's what the literature suggests, and that's what I suggest. Parallel cavity walls is great. We, we like to begin with a diamond-coated tip, which has a better cutting ability, and we can finish with a smooth tip, which smooths and cleans the cavity walls. Key points. Key points as far as ultrasonics is concerned. Two methods of producing ultrasound. We use piezoelectric electrical ultrasonics. There are two buzzwords with ultrasonics, cavitation, acoustic trimming, went over that, and that's basically what our irrigation. Ultrasonics can be used almost every endodontic step. It's an amazing instrument, and I think it enhances and makes more efficient our clinical endodontics. As technology advances, so does our specialty. Thank you very much for allowing me to present this presentation. Until the next time, I say goodbye. Thank you very much. Yeah.